one thing to have that cybersecurity training and those clear career paths. Uh, but curious if you guys have any other professional development opportunities, you know, that help contribute to that engagement and retention beyond cybersecurity training. Uh, we can start with you, Jessica. Uh, yes, we do. So we actually have an in-depth employee engagement program. And what that program does is, you know, folks walk into the door at Raytheon Technologies on day one and they go through new hire orientation, teaches them kind of all things you need to do to get through your first week. And then they start their on-job training. It might be some shadowing. It might be taking on some, some quick opportunity, depending on the situation. You know, some cases they might be waiting for clearance. So you've got to give them some work to do. Um, those shadowing opportunities allow us to do that. But really what we do is we pull them back in after their 30 days, usually within their first 90 days, and, and I use the word assimilate for lack of a better term, but really try to connect them with the, with the function of the organization they're working in. So it goes far beyond the employee orientation and really kind of brings them into, gee, I'm, I'm working in one directorate out of nine um, in digital technologies. So how and what do the other directorates do and how do I interface with that? We bring the leadership team in for a panel discussion, raw open panel discussion. People can ask direct questions and get some face time with their leadership. We bring in the organizational change management and different components around digital technologies to help folks that might be a sysadmin who's you know working in his lab and doing his thing, but now I'm going to understand how this director and that director and help me piece together a solution for a customer. So it really helps them connect the dots in the organization they work in and really defines different components and pieces they're hearing from their leadership team and flow down on what, you know, the difference between a buzzword and something that's actually actionable that I can take. We, at the same time, leverage those employee engagement opportunities to, again, learn about our people. It's really a people-first focus and understanding how do we, you know, keep the best and retain the best talent? Well, you do it through employee engagement. You do it through really understanding and listening to the voice of your people. And then also using that as an opportunity to provide these natural networking opportunities. So at Raytheon, you're coming through the door, you're learning your job, you're drinking from the fire hose. We're then taking you back and realizing this is a lot to take in. Let's help you understand the next piece to the puzzle. Let's help you understand what it means to drive your own career. And when you hear HR talk about that, and you know, I want to I pull a thread on something Romy said, you know, it's not only critical that the folks like InfoSec that we're working with are our partners, but that we also have that partnership within the functions of our organization. That's leveraging talent acquisition. That's leveraging our HR business partners. That's leveraging the folks in the different mission areas to really help us uh, bring these people up to a point of comfort. So they're six months in and they feel like they've maybe been here for a lot longer. They're not still drinking from the fire hose at that point. They're not trying to swallow the acronym soup as we joke here. Um, but really acclimate them and engage them with natural networking opportunities, understanding who their partners are, and then really understanding their organization as a whole and how they fit into that organization. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's great advice. Um, curious to hear your perspective on that, Romy, if you have a similar approach, or if you do anything different. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, functionally, right, I, I don't cross a lot of different um, organizations when it comes to the people that I build the programs for. But, you know, when I think about sales engineering, there's two aspects of it. One is the engineering part, which we've been talking about uh, for most of this webinar thus far for, but there's also what we call essential skills or AKA soft skills. My my leadership team told me to ikshne soft skills and only call it essential skills moving forward. So uh, you guys let me know what you think. But you know, the essential skills piece helps round out the sales portion of the sales engineer. And it really is, you know, what is your business acumen, financial acumen? How do you communicate with other people? Do you have presentation skills and do you have executive presence when you're in front of a, a Fortune 500 CX level type leader? And those are the kinds of other pieces, right? It's not just about, can I build a network? Can I secure the network? Can I consult my customer into things that they haven't thought about yet and, and what they need to be thinking about to run and secure a network? But it's, it's how do I resonate with them? How do I interact with them? How do I interact with other employees? And so those pieces, um, we partnered with LinkedIn Learning to be able to provide, you know, sort 
coursework, right? Prescriptive coursework, but also uh, in those pieces, ways to find your own curiosity and how to be a better writer or how to be a better presenter or a storyteller for our folks to move after. And Jessica, you know, really touched on something. We also take our sales engineers through something called Insights. And what Insights does, it's, it's a very long survey that makes you look internally, but it gives you blind spots and it gives you the ability to know hey this is my natural tendency and my natural tendency is is sometimes more to be very analytical or very you know outgoing or very you know not very data driven about you know the things that I'm going to go after but I'm going to go after it with a lot of uh, zest and gusto and so as, as you work with other people and you figure out you're going to team people together, it's good to get perspective, right? Of you can't have all data analytic people in a particular pod to get something done. You need different types of people to be able to make sure that the team works there and that you're thinking of the way other people think, not just how similar people think about how to solve a problem. And some those are some of the things that we've launched here um, besides the technical training aspect as well. New episodes of CyberWork are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to claim your free month of InfoSec skills. Sign up using the code CyberWork and you'll get unlimited access to hundreds of courses, hands-on labs, certification practice exams, skills assessments, and more. Use code CyberWork for InfoSec skills.